Before I start, uh, let me uh, uh, ask a question to the audience. How many of you own a cell phone? This is not surprising, because uh, we have more than 5 billion cell phone subscribers. And, uh, but what is surprising is that the majority of these cell phones are actually being used in the developing parts of the world. And if you had this connectivity, the fact that our cell phones are significantly better in terms of their hardware and software capabilities, this existing infrastructure indeed holds numerous opportunities for conducting um, basic medical tests and diagnostic tests. So let me ask another question then. <laughs> How many of you uh, own a personal microscope? <laughs> well, this is expected. <laughs> Well, today I'm going to be talking about how we can actually use our cell phones to conduct microscopy and microanalysis, and how we can use these, uh, um, these platforms that we have more than 5 billion in the world being subscribed to a network, as you can see in this world map, how we can use this infrastructure, this connectivity, and the hardware and the software of these gadgets to do something very useful, especially for global health challenges, for uh, for instance, looking for uh, infectious diseases, diagnosing infectious diseases. Imagine you had a cell phone that you could convert into a microscope through a cost-effective means so that you could look, for instance, for malaria smears to diagnose malaria. This could really help us to penetrate to resource-poor countries where there's no infrastructure, but the cell phones still work, better than probably in California. The same you could do, for instance, for spotting bacteria and pathogens using these attachments to the cell phone. So indeed, there are numerous opportunities that we can utilize cell phones to conduct microscopic analysis uh, and bring more advanced diagnostic tools to remote locations, to remote countries. To give you the scale of the problem, co-infections, HIV, TB, and malaria together cause more than 4 million a year. If you add to this number issues related to poor drinking water, we're losing more than 6 million. So using the cell phone as the backbone, we can do a lot. And that was the vision of our research lab. And we have created, actually, cost-effective attachments that could literally convert existing cell phones into advanced micros microscopes and microanalysis tools. What you see on the slide are some of our gadgets that we play around. My students uh, literally play with blood or other bodily fluids with these things. And, uh, and today I'm going to be talking about how these things work so that we can literally convert existing cell phones into cost-effective microscopes. And this is going to be a platform technology, which I, for the rest of uh, this talk, I'll be referring as Lucas. So I'll tell you more about Lucas, how it works, and what we can do with this platform technology. The first thing that I'd like to emphasize, compared to conventional microscopes, is that the Lucas platform that you see on the screen is actually a technology that doesn't require any lenses, any bulky optical components that you normally find in an optical microscope. If you take, for instance, uh, a high-end digital camera, the most expensive part of that camera is probably the lens. That's what makes it bulky, capture good images, and, uh, of course, be uh, uh, extremely expensive. So the Lucas platform does not utilize any of these lenses, and you can think, actually, conventional digital cameras or digital microscopes, something like this, where the typewriter is functioning like a keyboard. It's semi-digital in the sense that there is some component analog and some component digital. But in Lucas platform, everything is digital in the sense that there is no lens and computation. Computer algorithms are making up for the lack of complexity to make a very decent microscopic image. And because it's lens-free, it has some very important features, especially important for global health. Being lens-free gives us cost-effectiveness, compactness, as you can see, and lightweight. These microscopes, literally, that are attached to the cell phone are on the order of 40 to 50 grams without, without much, actually, cost. So then the question becomes, if I'm not using any lenses, how can I see microscale features within a specimen at the level where we're looking at less than one millionth of a meter in terms of scale? The Lucas platform is actually imaging the shadows of specimen. Quite different than our own shadows, which is pitch dark, as you can see, in a sunny day, cells at the micron scale cast unique textured shadows. So you can think of the shadow of a cell 
like a fingerprint which contains these textures. And those are the starting point for the Lucas platform to get quite advanced with what it can do. You're looking at now a slide of blood where most of these things are shadows of the red blood cells. That's what our blood is mostly composed of. But if you look closely, you would be seeing other cell types, like white blood cells, that cast uniquely different fingerprint-like shadows from which we can understand what's going on within a heterogeneous solution, like, for instance, blood or urine. But the situation gets a little bit more complicated as the density of the cells gets higher and higher. That's what you're seeing here. Of course, for a region like this, where the cell shadows start to overlap, we can't really identify what's going on there. But that's the time to realize that, physically, there's a lot embedded in this oscillatory shadow texture. So we can treat them as actually holograms, digital holograms, using computer algorithms, take something like this, and very quickly reconstruct the images using computer algorithms as if you had a physical lens there. But without the lens, we can do this, give you images that match exactly conventional microscope images that you would be normally capturing with these bulky op optical microscopes. The big advantage of this approach, besides cost effectiveness, lightweight, and compactness, is actually its imaging throughput, meaning that it can look at a significantly larger area. What you're looking at is a blood smear, which has an active area of on the order of 20 to 30 millimeters square, more than two orders of magnitude larger than a conventional microscope could look. If you were to digitally zoom into this large field of view, you'd be seeing the signatures of these red and white blood cells on the smear, which could be used for assessing, for instance, uh, um, if the patient has malaria or not. And for specifically malaria imaging, this is quite important because typically the peristemia rate is on the order of 1%, meaning that the pathologist is required to look at around 1,000 cells at least to be able to call a smear negative. That's why we need these large field of view, high throughput microscopes to look at a few thousand cells rapidly using extremely inexpensive designs as shown here, which could be attached to the cell phone or uh, connected to it using a USB cable. An important application of this platform could be also for monitoring of HIV-positive patients. In this case, the CD4 lymphocyte count is an important measure of the disease, and a typical healthy patient would have, roughly speaking, 1,000 CD4 lymphocytes per microliter. But once HIV kicks in, that number unfortunately drops to a few hundred. That's when opportunistic infections could be quite detrimental. The gold standard for such a test is flow cytometry. It's a quite expensive and uh, powerful technology, but even per test, it would cost 5 to $10, which would be unaffordable for uh, most of these villagers in, in remote locations. So what we've done is we've combined the lens-free computational microscopy with spatial microfluidic devices that could specifically capture these CD4 lymphocytes or other lymphocyte types, so that in whole blood, if you inject, you'll be capturing just the target cells of interest, which are then imaged with these handheld field portable microscopes. And this way, you can actually look at slides like this, where each one of these spots is coming from a specific cell type, in this case, CD4 lymphocytes or CD8 lymphocytes, and then counted to understand uh, what is the uh, immunity of the patient in terms of, un uh, in terms of therapy. Uh, for instance, in this case, the ratio of the CD4 to CD8 was a measure which was quite low for an HIV-infected patient. And recently, we've also introduced fluorescent microscopes on the cell phone. Whatever I've shown you so far were bright field transmission microscopy. But there are ways of actually converting a cell phone in a very cost-effective and lightweight manner, as shown here, into a fluorescent microscope or a fluorescent flow cytometer. This way, Using a very cost-effective attachment, you can look at very large areas. This is whole blood, and if you zoom in, you would be seeing white blood cells. And these are some Giardia waterborne parasites imaged with this uh, fluorescent microscope. Instead of capturing a static image, you, could you can also look at a dynamic uh, event, where in this case, we're flushing whole blood within a microfluidic device, and this is a captured movie by this cell phone, which is being analyzed to count these white blood cells. In the end, it gives a nice match to a Coulter counter or a hematology analyzer in terms of the density of these cells. So we believe that the Lucas platform holds significant promise to bring in cost-effective, compact, and lightweight microscopes, which perform much better than their lens-based conventional analog counterparts in terms of performance, in terms of throughput. And you can think of this step as the creation of the PC 
so that you can start to think about being cost effective and small, you can start to think about connecting them together to create something bigger than just a single PC. Imagine that we have increased for the next decade or so the amount of microscopes by two orders of magnitude or three orders of magnitude, and they're all digitally connected to each other. What we can do with such a platform, what, what I call a micro-internet, would really open up new avenues, new things that we haven't yet considered. Thank you.